What's up guys? Today we're going to check out A Quiet Place Day 1 on 4K UHD. So does this latest installment live up to the reference Atmos sound mixes of the previous two movies? Let's take a look at the Atmos viewer and find out. If you don't know what the Atmos viewer is, you can find a link down below in this video's description that tells you all about it, what it does and where to get it. You can also find a list of all the gear that I use for these 4K reviews down there as well. Here at 7 minutes 12 seconds in, we've got a scene that takes place inside of a little theater. It's mostly music that plays throughout the lower channels with a little extension up in the top middle speakers. Which did have me a little bit worried because it looked to be only a 7.1.2 mix. But the next scene coming up, at 8 minutes 27 seconds, we can hear a chopper flying around the top speakers with New York City ambiance playing in the bottom half. It's people chattering outside, it's traffic, and this does have excellent sound staging, which did put all 18 of my speakers to proper use. Another standout comes at 16 minutes in. What we've got here are aliens crawling around the outside of the building, which does sound like there's creatures about to break in through the ceiling. Now maybe the most active use of all the speakers comes in at 43 minutes 51 seconds. This is basically just rain and thunder which immerses you in all directions, and it makes it seem like it's really raining outside. Now those were just a couple clips that are very active. I think there's two, maybe three more scenes that I did take note of that's just as good, but for the majority of the movie, this mix is essentially 7.1.2. Here at 4116, this is another exterior scene with rain coming from above your head, so if you do have six top channels, you're only gonna hear the middle row do anything. At 10 minutes 56 seconds, this is the first time the aliens come crashing to Earth. You'd think because they are crashing down from above your head, you'd get some more activity up top, and when the windows explode in the bus, all the action stays in the lower channels, and only the seven lower channels. What's really disappointing is that the last 30 to 35 minutes of the movie is basically a 7.1 channel mix. Even with the creatures running down the streets, dropping off buildings, you get no action up in the top channels. The good thing is that the bass response does dig really low in quite a few scenes. There's actually a really heavy bass rise at the start of the movie. Explosions hit hard and the stampede of aliens running through the streets will definitely rattle your windows. And the dialogue was always easy to hear. And thank you to Kaleidoscape for supplying me with this copy of A Quiet Place Day 1 so I could bring you the home theater movie loving community this 4K review. Now if you do want to get your movies weeks, sometimes months earlier before they come out on physical media, consider getting a Kaleidoscape at our channel partner Dream Media. Links can be found down below in this video's description. Before we get into the video quality, let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 4.6K, it's got a 4K DI, it's rated PG-13, runtime is 99 minutes, aspect ratio is 239 by 1, and remember, I'm not here to review the movie itself, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the audio and video quality, which by the way does look different from the previous two movies. Part 1 and Part 2 had a heavy dosage of film grain, while this one remains clean and grain free. However, there is a touch of softness to the image, which for the most part keeps it from being 4K crisp, although there were a few shots that did look pretty crispy. The details, especially in close-ups, were so good that you can count the veins in eyeballs. Textures on clothing were finely rendered, and even the CG creatures looked really good and not cartoony at all. The color palette did follow the previous movies in that it was warm in certain scenes, while others were colder and slightly desaturated. It's not going to be an HDR showcase for vivid, rich HDR colors, but I thought the black levels were great, not crushing detail, while specular highlights from flames, daylight reflections all had really nice sparkle. It's an overall great looking 4K transfer right up there with the other Quiet Place movies. So I'm gonna go with a 9.1 for video. Unfortunately, the audio does not follow the same reference quality as the other two movies. It's barely got any top channel activity, although if you do want to squeeze out as much Atmos effects out of this mix as you can, it does make more sense to use four top channels rather than six or more. Lower sound stage was really good and had really good detail, and the bass can get aggressive. I'm gonna go with a 7.5 for audio. Now this review was based off of the Kaleidoscape version of the movie, so if you're holding off on grabbing a 4K disc, this would look the same if not better than the 4K disc. It does come in at 61.7 gigs for the Dolby Vision version, while the HDR10 version comes in at 58.6. Remember, these are downloadable files and not streaming, so it's the best quality that you can get. So what are your thoughts on the newest installment in the Quiet Place franchise? 
Do you think it's as good as the first two? Leave your comment down below and let me know. Now, if you do want to pick up this movie, I will leave some links for it down below in this video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.